Hey everyone, welcome to the Hornet King channel. And in this video, I'll be removing a massive Eastern Yellow Jacket colony that decided to make its nest underground in a schoolyard. The administrator of this school had contacted me and said they had a couple kids who got stung on the playground and it was time for this nest to go. To put it in perspective of how aggressive this species is, I made a list of my top five most aggressive yellow jacket species that I deal with here in PA. The most aggressive species that I deal with is Southern Yellow Jacket, Vespula squamosa. All right, Southern Yellow Jackets. Haven't even done anything yet. They're already attacking. The second most aggressive species that I deal with is Dulica Vespula arenaria, or an aerial nest building yellow jacket species, within the same class as Dulica Vespula maculata, aka the bald faced hornet. The third most aggressive species that I deal with is Vespula macula fronts, or the eastern yellow jacket, which is what I'm removing in this video. The fourth aggressive species I deal with is Vespula vidua. The fifth most aggressive yellow jacket species I deal with is Dulica vespula maculata or the bald faced hornet. The sixth most aggressive species I deal with is Vespula flava pelosa. You have no idea how many times it took me to say sixth most aggressive. Sixth most aggressive. <laughs> I kept saying sixth most aggressive. <laughs> That's embarrassing. The seventh and least aggressive yellow jacket species that I deal with is Vespula germanica, the German yellow jacket. So I wanted to put this into perspective for you folks so you could see my ranking as to how I find them to be aggressive. But it's not even really aggression as much as it is defensiveness. So when I say that a colony is aggressive, what I actually mean is that they are very defensive of their colony. It's not so much that they're aggressive, like they're sussing you out to find you, to attack you and swarm you whenever they can. That would be aggression. What I'm actually saying is that they're very defensive of their colony. So if something comes into close proximity of their colony or their nest, they become very defensive and they come out and attack to try to deter and dissuade from any creature inhabiting that space or coming near their nest or attacking their nest, etc. Wasps have a lot of predators. Other insects, a lot of mammals, including skunks, possums, foxes, raccoons, people, they have a lot of predators. Instinctively, they are gonna be defensive if you get close to their colony. You can't blame them for that. I mean, you can, and that person in the back can, and that person who was attacked for no reason. Yeah, right. And that person who says that bald-faced hornets are the most aggressive, they can blame them. But us normal and understanding folks can't blame them for being defensive. If someone like stumbles into my yard and says they didn't know my house was there, I'm still gonna be pretty upset and be defensive of my property. Get out. Can't really blame Yellow Jackets for being the same way. So now that you know how aggressive or defensive this species is, here's the video, check it out. I'm the Hornet King, and I removed some incredible and insane wasp nests. So this species is the Eastern Yellow Jacket, Vespula maculifrons, which is typically a subterranean yellow jacket species, meaning that they primarily will build their nests underground. They start out in small little rodent tunnels, and then as the nest progresses, they start digging the cavity bigger and bigger and bigger to allow for the nest to grow. This colony was massive. This nest probably had about 4,000 to 5,000 yellow jackets in it at peak season. And given the fact that this is like late August, this isn't even peak season for them, that is a pretty substantial colony. So what I do with most of my nest removals is I sit the vacuum nozzle perpendicular to the entrance way of where the yellow jackets are entering from. And the reason behind that is because wasps have hooked feet. And those hooked feet act like Velcro 
onto any surface that they're standing on, whether it's the paper nest, whether it's the dirt on the ground, whether it's a piece of wood, they latch on really, really well with all six of their feet. No vacuum can just suck them right off of that without really kind of getting right up close and pulling them off of it. So to kind of counteract that, I sit my vacuum nozzle perpendicular to the entrance way and the ones coming back from forging are mid-flight and they get sucked right into the vacuum. So the ones that are coming out of the hole, I start pounding on the ground to create a vibration and that stirs them up to take off to fly regardless of the vacuum nozzle being there. And when they're mid-flight, they get sucked right into the vacuum. And this is a perfect example. When I pull the vacuum nozzle away, they start to take off the fly to attack. If the vacuum nozzle is sitting straight down into the hole, they're not going to fly out. They're not going to come out. They're going to stay inside that cavity. So putting it perpendicular to the entranceway and then pounding on the ground, they come out, they try to fly, and they get sucked up right into the vacuum nozzle, which works like a charm every time. So what I don't really show too much here is that I would take breaks. I would pound on the ground, get them to come out, and then I would stand back. And the reason why I'm standing back is so that way the ones that are out foraging that are coming back, they're instantly swarming if I'm standing there. So if I move away from the location, they're going to try to go right down to the entranceway, right where the nozzle is, and they get vacuumed up there. So there's several periods where I'll just let the vacuum sit there for about 10-15 minutes and vacuum up a lot of foragers. Again, this colony was very productive, and there were a lot of foragers out foraging at the time that I'm doing this removal. So I don't want to just pull out the nest really fast or spray it or whatever and then just leave because all these foragers are going to come back and they're going to be all over this area. This is a child's playground at a school, at an elementary school, and it is not conducive to leaving a bunch of yellow jackets flying around this place and have someone else get stung again. So the idea is for me to remove the nest, not only remove the nest, but also remove the entire colony. So that's what I do. So as you can see, these aren't recycled images. I mean, I'm constantly pounding on the ground and more and more and more yellow jackets keep coming out. A lot of female workers, a lot of sterile workers, but also some males coming out too. The males are just trying to escape. They're not trying to attack. They can't attack. They have no stinger. But the sterile female workers do have a stinger. So when they're coming out, they're coming out to attack. They're not coming out to leave. They're not going coming out to try to find a new place to live. Nothing like that. So just kind of sitting the nozzle in what it's a good location for them to, for it to catch up a lot of the foragers as they come back. You see the second I step away, look at this, just this wave of yellow jackets coming into this hole. Now, they will kind of poke around in some of the grass along that piece of wood, but they will eventually start making their way over to where the actual entranceway is and get vacuumed right up. Again, the numbers in this were insane. I would do this probably about three or four times during this removal because they would just be swarming around so much and attacking me that not a lot of them were going down the hole. So I wanted to make sure that I not only was getting the ones coming out of the hole, but trying to get as many as I could that were coming back. So that way I didn't have just an influx of them at the very end of the removal. The vacuum's been running for like... 15 minutes and we're still bringing back foragers. I'm imagining this nest is a pretty good size, but you know what they say about assumptions. It's an ass out of you, but not me. As you can see, the numbers have died down quite a bit. I mean, it's obviously there's still quite a few floating around. So this is the time when I started just making sure that I got most of the guards that were inside of the entranceway to get them to come out and be vacuumed up. And then I can start digging up the nest. I wasn't really sure where the actual nest was. I knew it was probably underneath these one of these railroad ties. Well, I'm going to call railroad ties. I knew they were under there somewhere, but I wasn't sure if they were on the back side or the front side, under the grass, or if they were on the back side under the mulch. I kind of figured they'd be under the mulch because I was probably looser packed soil. But uh, once I dug this down, I did stick the point of my shovel underneath of the railroad tie just to find that there was a significant gap under there and no yellow jackets were coming out yet. So it had to be further forward and underneath the grass. So I just filled everything back in and just kind of packed it back down and then started digging from the front side. Yeah, like I was never there. <laughs> so just to do a, the first experiment here, just to see if this is where the nest was, push, and it went right down. As a matter of fact, it dropped so fast, I know it was kind of into the nest a little bit. So you can kind of see there's a little bit of paper kind of st sitting around inside that hole. But a lot of yellow jacks start coming out right away, so I knew, bingo, that's right where the nest was. So opening it up wider and wider just to make sure that I get a big enough hole so that way I can pull the nest out in one piece. The only problem about that is when you're digging out like that, you're, a lot of crap is falling down inside the hole as well. So 
it would be ideal to be able to just shove the vacuum nozzle in there and just, just break everything up and suck it out, which I do do that sometimes on smaller nests, like earlier in the spring when people have uh, ground subterranean yellow jacket species. I will just stick the nozzle into the top of where the nest is and just kind of pull, up, you know, pull it all out. Um, but in this case, this nest was so big, I didn't want to have to do that. So I want to be able to pull it out in one piece so I'm not releasing a lot more of the individuals that are in between the layers of comb, releasing them outside, and then they're going to be swarming and carrying on. So just dig the hole a little bit bigger as I have to to uh, accommodate for the size of the nest to pull it out in one piece. And I think this was like 7.30 in the morning too because I had to get here before school started. I think it started like around like 8.30 or something. So this is probably like around 7 a.m. And you can see the sun coming up, and I thought maybe, okay, they're not going to be as many out foraging since it's so early in the morning. And, but it was nice and warm. They were out super early. I mean, they were probably at the butt crack of dawn flying out and foraging. So uh, that really didn't work in my favor. Besides, this, I think they had nine removals this, this particular day. So I was trying to get it done as early as possible without um, coming out at 4 a.m., which sometimes I do that for the school. I'll come out at like 4 a.m. to handle some of their uh, ground nests and things. And when I do that, it's like it's so easy because I just walk over to where the hole is and just bag the nest. I dig it up real quick and bag the nest. And there's not as many foragers to contend with because everybody's inside the nest. So even as I'm removing the nest, even though it's still down the ground, there's an open cavity there. Most of the workers will still only go back to the entranceway. Even though the top of the part of the nest is exposed, they'll still just come out the entranceway. Now, ones that are coming out to attack me from where the nest actually is, from that hole they will fly back down into that hole. That's that's definitely um, a realistic situation. But for the most part, the ones coming back from foraging, despite the fact there's a gaping hole right there, they will still go down the original entranceway. So most of the time when I'm digging up like this, I will leave the nozzle kind of still sitting perpendicular to the entranceway to continue to catch the foragers. So I'm just trying to catch just the last couple few that are crawling around on the surface of the nest before I start pulling it out. Again, I'm not trying to release a ton more yellow jackets to have to deal with at the very end. But in all reality, you're going to have to deal with them anyway. So it's just kind of mitigating the problem and not necessarily like avoiding it altogether. So I was able to get this out pretty much in one piece. There's just a couple little uh, like peripheral pieces that broke off. But for the most part, this is the entirety of the comb. Now, Eastern Yellow Jacket, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, they're probably like the third most aggressive species that I deal with. And how I even determine that is that they're latchers. So any kind of species that comes out of the nest and immediately latches onto my clothes, latches onto my veil, that is a good indication as to how aggressive they are. And Eastern Yellow Jackets, they are definitely latchers. They're not as latching as Southern Yellow Jackets, uh, where the entire colony will come out and just pretty much cake you entirely. That's not to say there's not lesser aggressive or more aggressive within a specific species too. So Southern Yellow Jackets are primarily almost always super aggressive. But Eastern Yellow Jackets, I've have dealt with some that were less aggressive than some other Eastern Yellow Jacket colonies. So this particular one was very aggressive. They were latching all over my gloves. And as I showed you in the beginning of the video, one of the ones I pulled out of someone's basement ceiling, those ones were so aggressive. My entire glove was covered in Yellow Jackets. So there's definitely even exceptions to that rule too about whether or not something is more aggressive or less aggressive than another species. So bald-faced hornets are typically not that aggressive in comparison because they mainly just dive bomb to go right back to the nest. But there are some colonies that do have some latchers. So it's, it's not to say that they never latch or that they always latch. Sometimes some nests don't react a certain way, aren't super sensitive as I say. Um, sensitivity is probably a better term for it than being super defensive. Some colonies are really sensitive that if you walk around the nest, they're instantly going to come out and attack you. Some of them, you can walk around them all season long, they never bother you. So it really just depends. As you see here, there's very few yellow jackets coming back from foraging at this point, but they come back in waves. So they'll come back to be like 10 of them. Then like in a few minutes, they'll be like two. So I just let it sit there for about 15 minutes. And as usual, I bring the nest home and feed them to my chickens, my emus, and my rhea.
stinky booty. You're a stinky booty. Enjoy your nests. You need to drive two and a half hours in All right, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to check out this video. If you guys enjoyed this content, drop in the comments. Let me know what you think. If you have any suggestions for future videos or something like see me cover in an upcoming video, also drop in the comments. Let me know. If there's something specific you'd like to know about yellow jackets or hornets, drop in the comments. Let me know. Because I love to be able to touch on those things so you guys can understand them a little bit better. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to check out this video, supporting my channel, and I'll catch you on the next video. Sixth most aggressive species is do the sixth the sixth most aggr the sixth most the sixth most myth the sixth most aggressive species I deal with is Vespula. The sixth most aggressive species that I deal with is Vespula flava pelosa. The sixth most aggressive, the sixth most, the sixth most aggressive species that I deal with is Vespula flava pelosa. The th the th <laughs> seventh most aggressive, seventh most aggressive, seventh most aggressive. Uh, what is the seventh most aggressive?